Generally speaking, recording vibes is pretty simple. You point a microphone in the direction of the thing and it should work. But how do you take it to the next level without busting the bank? Stay tuned and find out. Hello, my name is Tim Collins, here with another weekly Vibraphone video, and if you enjoy what I do, I'd appreciate you hitting the subscribe and like buttons. Now, number one, things to think about before recording. If you won't be using the vibrato effect, be sure to open the fans and the resonators to allow for the fullest possible sound. You might want to tape them in place so they don't rotate while you play. Secondly, this is obvious, but think about what mallets you want to use. Duh. I have a Musser M48 vibraphone, and I have long since given up trying to rid this thing of strange buzzes and rattles. It's been disassembled and reassembled probably around 500 times, and there is no amount of WD-40, folded up paper, or Velcro that seems to get rid of all of these extra sounds anymore. So you need to decide for yourself how much extra noise you are willing to deal with before you record, and then try to rig your vibraphone so that it doesn't make those noises. Let's talk about some of the recording gear. If you like any of it, by the way, that I show in this video and you want to support me a little bit, you can use the affiliate links to purchase it. I used two main devices to record for this video. The first is the Zoom H4 handheld recorder. You've seen these before. I used the built-in stereo mics, which are aligned in a 90 degree XY pattern. This device is portable and it gives a good basic sound with a true stereo image. The second device I used is the PreSonus AudioBox 96, a USB interface that I recently bought for 89 euros. It was literally the cheapest audio interface in the store. It has two XLR line inputs, as well as MIDI and phantom power capability, which is important. This is a great entry-level audio interface that works with my laptop. Speaking of laptops, I am recording onto a mid-2014 MacBook Pro 15-inch Retina, and I'm using Logic Pro X to record. No effects or panning was added other than normalization. Also, I highly recommend this book. It's great for idiots like myself. Okay. Time to listen to some demos. Let's start with the sound recorded from the Zoom H4 directly to the SIM card. Now I've set up two Rode M5 small diaphragm condenser mics in a spaced pair. These are a great set of budget microphones that I bought recently. They have a cardioid polar pattern and they do require phantom power. Basically, I envision the vibraphone being in two halves, the upper half and the lower half, with a mic pointed roughly at the center of each. I tried to imagine you, the viewer of this video, hearing the sound as if you were in the same room facing the instrument. So the mics were placed pretty high above the instrument, around 73 centimeters. I hate when overhead mics are too close to the instrument because I always worry about hitting them with mallets. Okay, let's see what happens when I keep the spaced pair but move them lower towards the instrument. So now they're about 10 centimeters closer than they were before.
All right, now let's do away with the spaced pair and set up the same Rode M5 mics in an XY pattern, fairly close to the vibraphone. Check out how the imaging of the sound has changed. Okay, do you have any favorites yet? I, I think I do, but I'm gonna tell you at the end of the video. For the next demo, I experimented with moving the XY mic placement much higher and pointing down on the instrument from above. I do think it's cool to hear the subtle differences that come out depending on the combination of mallets and mic placement. One thing that I have noticed is with this XY pattern, the middle of the instrument is overexposed a bit as the polar patterns of each mic overlap. Before I bought these Rode M5s, the only other microphones that I own, I bought upon recommendation of a recording engineer friend. They are a pair of Cascade Fathead ribbon mics, which I bought about 10 years ago. I set them up in a spaced pair, similar to the first demo. By the way, you should not turn on phantom power with a ribbon mic. Here's what they sounded like. My recording setup is limited by my living room and by the microphones that I own, and I think I got a pretty good sound. My favorite was the spaced pair setup with the Rode M5 microphones at the very beginning of the video. My hope is that this video showed you how many possibilities there are, even with a limited budget setup. So if you liked it, please give a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button for more vibraphone content every week. Thank you for watching, and have a nice day.